What's up everybody? So today I'm finally back in the garage and we're going to be working on the Civic. Now, you guys remember I picked the Civic up a while ago. The weather was pretty crappy out, pretty bad. So I didn't get to do any driving with it or get to do anything fun with it. And uh, it's been super cold in the garage, so we just haven't done anything to it. So today we're finally going to jump into this and tackle some of the maintenance things that need to happen. First things first, the oil. I don't know when this oil was ever changed. I'm sure it's pretty bad, so that's the first thing we're going to do, do today. I've got new oil, new oil filter, and then an air filter you guys can see setting there. Um, the air filter, when I introduced this car, I could see it was pretty bad. It has like a little bit of damage and stuff to it, and it seems like it's pretty dry, pretty old, so we need to replace that. And then as far as like other things go that's not necessarily maintenance, just more like cosmetic things and things that kind of bother me, is uh, some of the pieces here in the interior. First thing here, steering wheel. You guys can see how that wobbles. That drives me nuts. And then when you turn the, the blinkers on, you go to turn and go back, it never disengages. So I'm gonna put in the stock EM2 steering wheel that I have over there. I know this is uh, EK hatch, but I think the EM2 steering wheel will fit. So we'll find out, get rid of this thing. Um, eventually I would like to put in a different steering wheel, possibly like a Type R one or something other aftermarket that actually fits and works for this car. Now, the other interior piece that I have is going to be the shift knob. I have that uh, Mugen shift knob. It's carbon fiber. I think it'll fit a lot better in this interior. I like the way it feels. So we're going to swap it out with that one. And then the other thing that I want to change out too is this back window. This back window, it's got some tint on it or had some tint on it. And as you guys can see here, it is all bubbled up. You can't see anything out of it when you're driving. So... I'm gonna go ahead, pull the tent off of this today. Be very careful without damaging any of these defroster lines, but uh, I think we can get it taken off and have it looking much better. And then, like I said, hopefully here in the future, we can go ahead and uh, tent all the windows on this car that we have a full uniform look. But for now, let's go ahead, jack this thing up and uh, do the oil change. <laughs> Oh man, it's a little oily under here. So we just gotta crack that drain plug and uh, drain the oil. So like it's a 17. Ooh, didn't get any out of me. Dang, looks pretty black though. So we'll let this go ahead and drain for a little bit and then take the filter out. Oh yeah. So there's the oil in the filter. I don't know if this has a date on it or anything to show me when it was last changed. But uh, yeah, I'd say that's pretty black and needed to change. Looks like my bend's getting pretty full, so I'll have to empty that out. But uh, for now, let's go ahead, throw on our new filter and put new oil in this thing and have this thing running good and new. All right, so here's our new filter. First step up, go ahead and lube that up. Get that ring with some fresh oil on it. So I got this new one open. Just like that. And now we can go and put this on just hand tight. Okay, so we went ahead, got the city back on the ground. I took the fill cap off, put a funnel in. Now we can go ahead, fill it up with oil. You guys can see here, I've got 5W30 full synthetic Valvoline, which will go in here. I believe it takes four quarts, or I guess I read in the manual where it says 3.75 to four quarts. We'll start with 3.75, check it, and then go to four if it needs more. So let's go ahead, top this thing off. Okay, so you guys can see the line right there on the jug. That should be 3.75 quarts. We should be good. Let's go ahead, start this thing up, check the dipstick and make sure it's all filled up. So you guys can see there, hopefully you guys can see there, that's 3.75, so it looks like we can go to four quarts. So let's go ahead and dump in just a little bit more and we should be good. Okay, so now we got the oil topped off and good at four quarts. I can go ahead and put the cap back on. We'll finish that off. Oops. And go ahead and jump onto this air filter over here. You guys can see here, 
it's not the best. It's got some damage. It's pretty dried out. So I've got this new one over here. It is a Spectra, which is basically, I think it is the same exact thing that's in here, just a little bit bigger. So I'll fill up more space. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, oh yeah, you guys can really see the damage right there. So this, we're gonna go ahead and swap out with that. And uh, we'll have this engine bay finished off here. Now, you guys can see here, it has got like an oil leak in the engine bay itself. You can see there's stuff on the transmission and stuff. I believe it's coming from the distributor. So here in the future, we'll be touching that up. And uh, one more thing to check, since we did start it up, Check and see if there's any oil leaking, and uh, it looks pretty good. There's no other oil down there than what was already there before, so we're good. So, filter next. All right, so here's the new filter all unboxed. That'll look way better in here. So now we can go ahead, pop this thing off. I already got it loose. Slid that right off. We can go ahead and just chuck that thing, and then put the new one on. Just need to tighten it down and we're good to go. Okay, so we got it all tightened down. It's not going anywhere. Finished up here in the engine bay for now. There's a few things, like I said, I saw underneath the car. Um, first of all, I think the distributor has a little bit of a leak. That's why there's so much oil in the engine bay. So we need to get that fixed at some point. And then looking underneath the car, um, the tie rods look pretty worn out. The boots are kind of missing. Um, and then it looks like it needs tires in the front. They're pretty worn out from the camera. There's a little bit of a, like I said, a slight camber on the front here. So. We'll need to get new tires eventually and uh, adjust the height on this. It is pretty low, so I noticed when I drove it the other day, it was kind of scraping, so we'll do that here in the future. But for now, engine bay is complete. Like I said, just for now. Um, let's go ahead, move on into the interior. Okay, so now we're here in the interior. Let's go ahead, take out the steering wheel and replace it with that EM2 one that's down there. Um, it's just a 19 millimeter bolt here in the center, or a, a nut, I guess, and uh, take this off. Shouldn't be too bad. I went ahead and pre-loosened it just because I know sometimes these things can be pretty tight. So let's go ahead and take this thing off. <laughs> Yeah, look how bad that is. It's all chewed up and stuff. I like the wheel. It looks like it's a cool like uh, Momo wheel and stuff, but uh, it's pretty worn, pretty beat. The hub's not the greatest. So now we'll go ahead and swap it out with the EM2, the EM2 one that I have here. I think this should just bolt up. I don't know if I need this ring here or not. Looks like there's no wiring for it, so or else there was wires for it. Oh yeah, there used to be. It looks like they're pretty. Uh, <laughs> it's like somebody just cut them off instead. So we're not gonna worry about that for right now. I guess I can leave this on here for now. I'm not really sure where that goes, but we'll let that stay there for now. And then go ahead and slide that back on. Put the nut back in place. And tighten it up. Okay, so that should be good for now. Um, all I got left to do is put on the put the airbag in. Obviously, like I said, there's no way to plug this airbag in. And I just need to find two screws that'll fit in here. They go onto these side holes. But for now, I'll just go and set this in place. So there it is. It's on here now. Obviously, it's not in position. Like I said, I need to find two screws for the back here to hold this down. Um, but I guess let's see if we can turn off. The blinker's on a turn. Hey, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I'll do that again. So blinker's on, you can see it flashing up front. And it shut off. Cool, so we do know now that the EMT steering wheel will work. Um, eventually, like I said, I would like to swap this out for something else, like either a Type R steering wheel or something aftermarket along the lines of this. Maybe just get like the correct hub so I can actually have full functionality of this. But uh, yeah, the EM2 steering wheel fits. So next up, let's go ahead, swap out this uh, shift knob with this 
moving one that I have here. Okay, so let's go and pop this one off. I'm not a big fan of it just because it is kind of like that. It was supposed to be like a red anodized, I guess, probably to match the shifter itself. But uh, it's a little kind of pink and faded. It doesn't line up correctly. And like I said, I have the Mugen one here, carbon fiber. I think it looks a lot better. So we'll go ahead, take this off. And based on the weight here, I think the moving one feels a little bit heavier. Yeah, so I kind of like that a little bit more, having a little bit heavier weighted shift knob. And this should be the same thread. So we should be able to spin this on. That looks way better than that, than this pink thing. I'm really happy with that. Sweet. That looks much better. Now that the steering wheel and shift knob are in, it's going to be a lot better to drive this car. It's going to feel a little bit better. Not going to have to worry about the uh, the blinker situation and stuff. Plus, with this steering wheel here, it was super close. So even when you turn, you would bump into these. So that was another issue I didn't like about it. I still need to find some screws for this just so the airbag doesn't wobble around. But yeah, this shift knob is going to be much better. Steering wheel, I think, will be much better until we eventually upgrade to something else. But now we can go ahead, move on to the back window. I don't know how well you guys can see it or not, but uh, you can see the bubbling and stuff from the inside here. It is somewhat hard to see out of the car, especially when backing out. Can't have that. So I need to get rid of that. It's ugly. It looks bad. Eventually here in the future, we'll, we will be retinting the windows. Um, since I'm in Iowa, I'll probably just be able to do the back three here. We're not allowed to do the fronts. And... Uh, just give it an overall uniform, clean look, just getting them all retinted. But like I said, for now, that back window needs to go. It's it's ugly. <laughs> I just gotta be careful. I can't destroy or damage any of the defroster lines. So let's go ahead. Um, we'll grab a heat gun and uh, try to get it off as carefully as possible and remove as much residue as we can. Okay, so now moving on to the back. To make things a little bit easier, I'm gonna go ahead, pop out all this trim, just so I have full access to this back window. I went ahead, got my plastic uh, panel removal set here. I think this one will probably be the best. But yeah, looks like I'm missing a clip there, so this one should come off. Let me take out this back panel, work our way over. Um, looks like I have to take this one off first, and well, I guess second, and then these side pieces. That way you just have easier access to get to the window tent, and uh, less likely have a chance of damaging the defrost lines. Man, those things are tight. I gotta be really careful. I don't wanna break any of those. Looks like I did pretty good. Didn't break any of them. Sweet. Okay, so you guys can see here now, it is all exposed. You have full access to all the corners and areas up here. Same thing went down here in the top half. So we'll go ahead, grab a heat gun, warm it up, and just try to peel it off slowly. Okay, so you guys can see here, I got most of this crap off. There is still like a bunch of residue. It was just not sticking to this at all. It's awful. Uh, this stuff is just trash. You guys can kind of see there's like a second little bit of like a layer up here on some spots. Um, a lot of this stuff is just glue. So I'm gonna need to take some like soap and water and uh, maybe some super fine steel wool and try to get this off of here. Um, I'm gonna try to work at this, see if we can get it off. Like I said, I do not want to damage any of these defrost lines. They all seem to be intact right now. It seems to work. So, uh, yeah, this, <laughs> this kind of sucks. That tent is awful. It's garbage. I don't know where it's from, but I don't know. Whoever installed it didn't do a very good job. I'm sure it's probably just some do-it-yourself style tent. And, uh, yeah, that's not the best job. So let's go ahead. It's open water and uh, try to get this stuff off. 
2,000 years later. So finally, after scrubbing and scrubbing on this back window, I managed to get all the residue off, all the old tent off. It looks way better. I can actually see through it. I'm going to show it to you guys here. You can actually see through everything, which is awesome. Put this down here. You can see through the car. So that is a huge improvement from the ugly, nasty, bubbly tent. Um, that just made an absolute mess though. That really sucked. Ended up using like some steel wool, some goo gone, some Windex, just sitting here for a couple hours, just scrubbing away, trying to get it all cleaned up so I could see through it. So now that it is done and it is complete, we can go ahead, throw in our rear trim pieces back here, button it all up, make it look good and uh, go from there. I've got a big mess to clean up because that window tent was so brittle and it is just everywhere. And the other thing too, um, I know I was trying to keep the rear defrosters in good shape, I don't know if I damaged any of them. I won't know. And the other thing is I never tested it to see if it worked before I got the car. So I don't know. We'll find out. If it doesn't work, not a big deal. If it does work, awesome. But uh, let's go ahead, like I said, put all this stuff back together. So there you guys have it. We got everything accomplished today that I wanted to get done. We got the oil change, the air filter, the steering wheel, the shift knob, and the back window all cleaned up. I'm really happy to have that stuff done and uh, situated. So now it'll be really nice to drive this car. Um, the steering wheel will be a huge improvement, no longer hitting my knuckles on the on the blinkers and actually having the blinkers shut off when you turn. The shift knob, I think, just looks a lot cleaner in the interior. And the back window will be huge upgrade. I hated that bubble tent. Definitely makes the car look way cleaner too. So coming up here in the future videos, we'll be doing a few more maintenance things, which I know they're kind of boring, but they need to happen. Um, we need to do the tie rods. Both of those sides look pretty bad. And then we need to figure out where the leak's coming from. I think it's coming from the distributor. Looks like it's kind of leaking more in that area. And then tires, we definitely need new tires on this thing. They're starting to show some cords. And I think if we end up doing the tires, um, I'll probably have the wheels dismounted and take them back. And then we can go ahead and either paint these wheels, powder coat them or dip them or something just to make them look a lot better because I'm not a huge fan of the orange wheels. I think we could go with a different color. Um, I'm kind of leaning more towards white, but if you guys have any other suggestions, throw it down in the comments below and let me know. But uh, hopefully you guys are excited for the Civic build. I know we're finally getting started on this and I'm really excited to be working on it. So if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for more content and I will see you guys in the next one.